you have found the land of Eos. Here, love, friendship, and peace rule supreme. However, the world is ever expanding, and along with it, denizens of both friend and foe. Things are not always as they seem here, finding their own strengths and courage within one another is the only way the Guardians can survive. Take a listen, friend. Here are the Center Chronicles. Hello, Khan. Khan bows respectfully, motioning with his head that the others should do the same. Logic does so slightly, however Sam does not. Oh, no, Sam. Please. She's okay, Con. After all, we haven't been introduced. That doesn't give her the right to disrespect. The elven woman catches Khan's eyes. And why should she bow? We've been living here since before time forgot, but have never made ourselves known. Be reasonable. Of course, Your Majesty. It just seems as though if she were here to ask for your help, the least that she can do is be respectful. She is not disrespecting me. However, you are by arguing with me. Hello, Samina. Oh, please. It's Sam. We met once before, right? The woman smiles brightly. In the early wars, yes. I was in another form. I'm impressed you remember that. You were pretty damaged. <sighs> we all were. The elf leans forward and whispers. Yes, but it doesn't seem like anyone else remembers now, does it? Even with an eidetic memory. <laughs> what are you? Sam! What? <laughs> oh, I like her. I am Queen of the Elves, and I have many names. But you can call me Selina, or Sel if you prefer. Well, it's nice to meet you officially then, Sel. Indeed. What brings you here? Well, a few things, actually. I haven't seen the mouse. He isn't in my forest. He's not. Nor the winged wolf. Any idea where he might have gone? He was last seen in the waste. I am sorry, Logic. He is magically hidden. Well, at least now we know. Now, the other thing is about our dear Sam here. I see nothing wrong with you, Healer. It's... it's okay. Sam, if she can help, why not ask? You're right. Either way, it's okay. But you should take the chance. Sam, I'm curious. What is that gadget there? Uh, uh, Logic and I came up with something to make that section move properly so I can keep up a bit easier. It's brilliant. You two could probably reverse death if you wanted to. My stars. I'm sorry, sweet lady. You've got such a big heart and I am unable to restore it. You sacrificed it for a greater good. It's not fair. No, it's not. He absolutely took advantage of your nature. I truly am so sorry. Is there truly nothing to be done? Cell looks at Khan and at Sam, who is now looking straight at the ground, embarrassed. It's okay. Um, we, we should go. Wait. Sam stops mid-stride, but doesn't look up. With a flip of her hand, Cell produces a small metal medallion on a delicate chain. Cell leans down and gently puts her fingers under Sam's serpentine head, helping her raise it. Noble creature, I cannot fix what has been done, but I can at least end your self-consciousness. With this, you may access any oasis in my forest. You'll find any environment you can imagine here. And you have the favor of the elves. Speak my name on the wind, and I will be able to hear you. If I cannot help, I have elven guards who will come to your aid. And it's a projector of sorts. May I? 
Sam nods and bows her head slightly so Cell can put the medallion on. As the lightweight metal slides into place, Sam glances down at her tail. If she didn't know any better, she wouldn't know it was missing. A perfect holographic projection makes it look as though she is whole. It will respond and move as though it is real, but it is a projection. I understand. Thank you. Of course. Who is that? Cell turns her head, looking past the group. Her voice becomes a deadly quiet whisper. You are not welcome here, stranger. Take your sand and leave. Sand? Is... Can you tell if it's a dog shape? Well, yes, actually. Oh, boy. How can he see through my illusions? He... Oh, man. Um, Majesty, it's my friend, Miles. He probably heard that I got hurt. A collector? Um, yes, ma'am. How did you come across him? Um, he and Hope. She died early in the wars. They brought me here. Sam. Sand blows around them in a thick blanket as a giant Tibetan mastiff arrives in the forest. He is large. His long, double-coated fur matches the tan color of the sand he rode in on, with darker brown markings around his ears, face, and on the bottom half of his legs. Cell casts a spell of wind to shield their eyes and puts a hand up in the universal stop sign as the enormous dog races towards the party. Khan immediately steps in front of Cell. Sam, what happened? Who did this? Was it her? Before Sam can get a word in, Miles turns and charges at Cell. Miles, stop! She's trying to help! Sam, do all of your friends that I don't know just burst into things without knowing what's going on? No. This is actually highly unusual for him. Miles, I'm fine. Now, I don't care who or what you say you are. Sam is family, and I... Wait. Wait, what? The giant dog finds himself surrounded by arrows on knocked bows held by stony-faced elves and at the tip of Khan's spear. Ah. Uh. Hi, Miles. Um, welcome back. Stand down. The elves listen and immediately back off. But Khan stands firm with a spear pointed at Miles' throat. How are you here? I tracked Sam, and she was here. Therefore, I found her. It's a pretty simple concept, don't you think? This place is magically protected. That didn't answer my question. The sly dog smiles and steps back away from Khan's spear and turns to Sam. You're really okay, right? And is that gadgetry on your back? Hello. We haven't met. <laughs> oh, damn. I see why you like him. I... You know, this is awful. Go for a walk, Khan says. Well, I didn't expect a sandstorm in the middle of the forest. So why is this my fault? <laughs> oh, well, Miles. Hello, you make quite the impression. Well, I aim to please, ma'am. I... Don't know where to begin, Miles. It's been a long time. Um, I'm sorry I wasn't there, kiddo. I'll, uh, I'll be there next time. You can bet on that. Sam looks as though she ate a lemon at his use of the word kiddo. Everyone's a kiddo to you, old man. 
The tension dissipates. Khan lowers his spear as they all laugh. Well, Sam, do you think if I ask real nicely, and seeing as I came all this way just for you, you would make me those waffles for breakfast? Excuse me? Who are you? I could ask you the same question, son. Okay, boys, you're both pretty. Chill out, Miles. This is logic. He's my partner. Well, by the gods, you sailed down? Oh, well, it's nice to meet you, son. Not in a million years would I have thought my little Sammy. Oh, that is worse than Samina. Shut your mouth, old man. Logic just stands there a moment, his mouth half open, utterly baffled by the scene playing out before him. Okay, can someone explain to me what is going on? <sighs> Everyone, this is Miles. He and Hope brought me here, pulling me out of my uh, previous living situation. I'm sorry, Miles. At the name of Miles's deceased partner, the jovial dog looks sucker punched in the gut. It's, uh, it's all right. These things happen. The way of the universe. <laughs> Can't change the past now, can you? Sam puts a gentle hand on Miles's shoulder. I would love to make you some waffles. Breakfast for dinner? I'm sure Logic would love the opportunity to get to know you. Actually, I think I ought to go reacquaint myself with the general area. It has been a while. I'll just set up a little living quarter in the wastes. If I can get that old windbag to get off my back. Do you mean Fierza? A windbag? Well, it sounded nice in a blowhound either way. <laughs> Neither of them understand it, but they are friends. She seemed nice. Other than the forehead, right? She didn't mean harm. Right. Must have caught her on a busy day. She practically broke down my door. Oh, an exceptionally good one, then. Otherwise, it would have been not clean off. Okay, you know what? I'm getting tired. I think it's a good time for us to go. Thank you, Cell, for all your help. What did you bring with you, Collector? You know, it's rude to just call someone by their species. I don't address you as Elf or... Anything else, now do I? The elf turns her side to the group and casts a spell, her long, elegant fingers becoming vines that bury themselves into the ground, and her eyes begin to glow. The air begins to be filled with whispers that are almost overwhelming. No single word can be deciphered. Niz presses against Khan and lays her ears flat as Sam makes a face at Logic, who is watching interestedly. Miles' eyes are also glowing. I... I did not bring that. What in the seven circles of all the hells is there? A shadow serpent? Ma'am, with respect, I'm afraid you may be mistaken. There ain't no shadow serpent that I have ever seen that looks like that. What do they look like? Zal brought me one once. Or rather, brought me to it. Couldn't fit in my lab. The closest thing it resembles is a human-sized centipede, but has lobster-like claws and serrated teeth like a shark. Males have these pincers. The exoskeleton is definitely more like armor, too. Oh, it's an overgrown cute puppy. Miles reaches out and touches Niz's shoulder. Her eyes glow for a half second, and her paws cover her mouth in horror. Not so cute, Bucky. Miles. 
I was only helping. She didn't ask. Also, did you have permission or did you just barge into her head? I didn't mind. That's not the point. If he's gonna go around yelling about manners... Call all the guardians to me, Con. That... that creature doesn't occur in nature. Not even in the deep wastes, nor the wilds. Just as logic reaches his data pad, a bear's roar <sighs> is heard over the comms. All guardians to the forest! He broke through my shield! Well, it, uh, it wasn't that hard. Not you dumbass with your ridiculous dust devil! The signal cuts in and out, Fuerza's words completely unclear. We're incoming. Ha! Coming in hot! Logic looks mildly disappointed, despite the urgency of the situation. What's wrong, other than the obvious? Zah got to use my all-hands button first. Are you pouting right now? No. She wouldn't sound any alarm without something beyond big. She sounded unnerved. Fuerza? Nah, she was probably running. What on earth could make her run? I know, she looks a little fluffy, but she runs more often than you'd think. Sure, to the wastes. To the deep wastes. To find her liquor storage. Must have gone lost in a recent, uh... Now what did she call it? A dust devil? I much prefer a boob, but y'all know. <laughs> Listen, you're the one that's gonna have to deal with her if she starts to rage. Y yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll match her. Uh, where does this thing end? It's it's massive. Still mostly in the wastes, but it's been traveling for hours. Oh no, that is not an it. What do you mean? Oh, stars, let me be wrong. <laughs> he is gloriously angry. Lightning begins to arc off of Portal, while Niz works to prevent the lightning from starting fires in the forest. Thank you, sweet Niz. <laughs> He's quick. I, I don't know how long I'll be able to keep up. Portal? No. 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 I don't think so. Not this time. Oh, boy. What? Portal shifts into a storm crow form and flies as fast as he can towards the wastes. He dodges or shoots lightning attacks to avoid getting caught by the vines that reach for him. <sighs> That's going to be a problem. Ace begins to shift into her falcon form to give chase when Zah rushes into the queen's clearing. Don't you dare, Ace. He has the best chance in the air. We all do. You are not my boss, ma'am, and you don't know what he can do. Even at his largest, he won't be able to do a thing other than scorch that exoskeleton. He will die if he tries to dive bomb. Our best option is to attack his underbelly, which he cannot reach from above. He has to be smart. Otherwise, it's useless. I can't get through to him. Ari, can you reach him telepathically? He's still sentient, but he has some kind of block. I can try to force the issue, but he's so, oh, so bad. Aria, what did you mean it's not an it? Sam looks to Aria, seeing frightened tears streaking and sizzling smoke trails down her face. I know that mental signature. It's, oh, Sam, it's hail. Only, it's not. He was. He's not anymore. 
He made a deal with the brood mother of the Shadow Serpents. She's the only one that big. We need to get up a tree. Now. This one. The top creates a canopy that's solid, and we can get a little bit of a vantage point. Please, allow me to help. It's the least I can do. Miles creates a sandstorm big enough to lift everyone and carries them atop the tree with much grumbling from Fuerza. Sam wraps herself around Logic to hide her face. Not a tree snake. Well, pucker up, buttercup, because today, today you wild, little messy. Stop it. I'm not a kid anymore, Miles. Hey, uh, can we save the squabble for later? He's here. He still has a chinchilla vision, but he has the senses of a shadow serpent otherwise. So be careful. Logic, what's the best plan of attack? Well, I don't know. I don't have enough data yet. As they prepare to fight, a pair of furry pincers pierce the ground. Hello, Sam. I think my experiments finally have some usable results. What do you think? Oh, God. The Center Chronicles is a Land of Eos production written by LB with music and audio engineering by Jacob Howard and sound effects by Archangel Studios. Featuring the voices of the cast in order of appearance, Shinkibi as the introducer, Jillian as Sam and Cell, Gavin Cash as the narrator, Deep Voice Guy as Khan, Jacob Howard as Logic, Tart as Miles, Night Goddess as Niz, Big Bees as Fuerza, Madison Cole as Ace, The Merry Meg as Arya, Oliver Khan as Portal, and Chris Nazareed as Hale. The Center Chronicles is a free weekly podcast that you can enjoy on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. The next episode airs Monday, September 11th. Thank you for listening, and if you enjoyed the show, please like, comment, and subscribe. Give us a rating and let us know who your favorite character is. Until next time, friends.